Hello guys and welcome back to Football Manager 2023 on our epic European journeyman save where as you can see we have been appointed the manager of MTK Budapest. It's episode number 86, it's nation number 10 which is Hungary having recently finished uh, the league title in Poland with Wisla Krakow. <laughs> Now, it has been an entire season since uh, that happened. I did resign as the manager of Avisla. I've had to wait an entire season for the MTK job to come up. They've narrowly avoided relegation from the top flight in Hungary, uh, despite actually predicted to finish higher up, which is why the manager did get the sack. Uh, unfortunately, no jobs became available in Hungary until the end of the season, uh, which is why I've had to wait so long. I've been sat here clicking continue for quite some time now. Uh, but MTK have approached us. Uh, to be their new manager, uh, eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of the 61-year-old who has recently spent time away from club football. Talentai arrives with a record of 578 wins, 140 draws and 185 defeats in his career. He's also won 12 league titles and 11 cups. Now, as I always say, I'm going to read this out when I get a new job. Uh, we have ticked nine nations off, but I've also had some promotions uh, from lower leagues, which is where the 12 league titles come from. Uh, my first game in charge will be against... Uspest in the Division 1 on the 2nd of August. I'm not entirely sure what date I'm in at the minute, uh, but he replaces the previous man in, manager, Aaron Galax. Jolt Kopanyi was considered to be the favourite, uh, but uh, he following a public denial of any interest, the club were forced to move in another direction. Okay, Talentire, who is an Irish Champions Cup winner with Bohemians, brings a wealth of experience with him, prefers a 4 4 2 still. Uh, lifted the PKA Bank Polski Extra Kalakasa with a Vizsla Krakow in 2046. And his appointment could be considered quite a coup. So, at MTK Budapest, we've got a fairly decent budget. We're, we're predicted to finish 7th. Uh, we finished 7th last season, as you can see, narrowly avoided relegation. The club has won the Hungarian 1st Division 23 times in its history. Got 5,000 capacity stadium. Hidikuti Nanda, if that's how you say that, apologies if it's not. Uh, 65,000 wage budget, about a million to spend on players as well. Quite an old club, founded, founded in 1888. In terms of the players, we're going to have a look around at them. Obviously, there's no top goal scorer uh, because we're, we're now at the end of the season. I think it's, it may have even ticked over to the next season. Uh, but the board expect us to record a mid-table finish uh, and walk, work towards developing the best youth system in the country. Uh, so we're going to have a look around the uh, around the club, like we always do. We'll uh, we'll have a a meet of some of the players, and then I'm going to play through the pre-season. I'm in June, uh, so the season has just ended. In fact, we have ticked over to the to the next year already. In terms of how last season, you can see this horrible run that they had. They were the manager's job was insecure around about here, but then they went on this little mini streak, and uh, it sort of saved his job. Uh, but then they've had this horrible, horrible run towards the end of the season, winning one of the last, what's that, 10, 11 games. And in terms of Division 1, uh, how they actually finished was 37 points of five clear of the drop zone. Uh, so there is some work to do here. Ferran Varosh did win the title again on goal difference this year from Puskas Academia. Uspest would predict to finish third, so they've had a little bit of a poor season as well. There are opening game opponents. Financially, the club is in an okay position, 1.3 million in the bank. We have got a million to spend, though, so don't expect that to stay like that. We've got a little bit of wage budget to spend as well. Committed spending of 50,000, which tells me that there are some players' contracts expiring. Uh, coming up pretty soon, indeed there are. I might have to have a look around quickly and see if I can get any of them to sign. Like Tamas Lazar, it looks like he could be a pretty handy player for us. Possibly a step down in quality from what we're used to in uh, what, we've, what we've been used to in Poland again, but uh, it's the next one on the list. I've also got the next one loading in, uh, which is going to be Romania. Uh, Poland is on its way out as well. In terms of how Wisla Krakow did, they finished third, seven points behind Legia. So Legia resume title winning credentials. Third place in the end for Wisla after they started off quite poorly. Uh, it was not too bad. They had a very, very good run in. 
in terms of how they did in Europe as well. We'll just have a quick look at it. They did get to the Europa League league phase uh, and they also got to the knockout playoff round, but they were defeated by Rapid Vienna in that. So a decent run for them. They've got £4.5 million in the bank, so they have actually been spending uh, some of that money. If we have a quick look at what they, th- they spent, £13.75 million on players last season. Uh, they, ra- they, they absolutely raided Rakov uh, for players. I think we already went over that. Uh, Luis, possibly the, the standout one there. Uh, so exciting times ahead at Vistler. If they continue to be a top three team, uh, then that is good. In terms of our squad, I can't see goals and stuff like that, unfortunately, because of it has ticked over to the next season. Uh, but Kolos Kuzhansky is pretty <laughs> considered to be the best player at the club. Uh, he is an inside forward. Um on the left-hand side, which is pretty good. He's also actually got a contract as well. Uh, so uh, so that's good. We do have some players that can play in our positions. Goalkeeper, thankfully, we've actually got a fairly decent goalkeeper, which is good. We normally come to these clubs and we don't have a good goalkeeper. In terms of where we're predicted to finish, though, guys, before I, I sign anybody, is 7th at 101 to 1. Ferenvaros, of course, the favourite. Uzpest are quite some way ahead of us in fourth place. So we do have some work to do. Uh, I am going to go and do the pre-season. And we'll come back in, when was it? 38 days time. Uh, and we'll take on that first game against Uzpest. One thing I am going to do, guys, in between this episode and the next episode is now that we've reached 25 years into our save, which we have. Uh, I believe it tells you in the game status where we started. We started on... The 31st of the 1st, 2022, so we're actually more than 25 years in. I'm going to do a little uh, a little manager timeline thing uh, and release it. And maybe it's a short. If I, I know I've said I'm going to do this before. I said it after 20 years, but I, I, I didn't. I forgot. Uh, so we're going to do it after 25. Um, still, as you can see, in-game editor use, no. Uh, obviously, we've got that uh, little editor icon hidden at the top there. Um, but... It, it does appear every now and then when I forget to turn it off, but we, we're not using it. We've got no database changes. Uh, apparently, my relationship has now expired. The wife's currently sat downstairs watching some rubbish on the telly uh, that I'm not interested in. So here we are. Um, right, pre-season, guys. I'm going to go and do that. We'll come back for the first game of the season. Uh, so I'll see you guys in just a minute. Right, hello, guys. Welcome back to the second part of today's episode. Uh, MTK, we've reached the start of the season. Uh, we've made some signings. We've also let a few people go. We'll go over them first. Then we'll take on our first game against Uspest, who are a local rival. Uh, we also have another rivalry with the best team in the country in uh, Ferenvaros. Uh, they're considered a derby. So then, in terms of the transfers, you can see that we have received some money for some players. We've also spent a fair bit, including breaking the club's record transfer. In terms of the outs, uh, I didn't really know the squad but I've, I've sort of gone through and listed them by potential. I've sold the ones who don't really fit the system that we use. Um, so Larink has gone to Kisvada for £68,000. The board quite pleased with that one. Svab has left on a free transfer, as has Pax. Obviously, there was a few players whose contracts were expiring as well. Giacomo Apuzzi is a young Italian centre forward. He's way down here in the pecking order in terms of uh, his, his ability to the rest of the squad. His potential's not great either. His physicals are good, uh, but we, we decided to cash in on him, get him off the wage budget. Uh, the other big one was Paul Sentamu. He is an ageing Ugandan attacking midfielder, which is a position that we don't play in our system. Uh, so we decided to let him go as well, get him off the wage books, which was great. In terms of the eight, uh, the ins, the first one I brought in was Ronnie Hurao. He is a uh, Reunion, uh, which is, a, I believe, a French state in Africa of Reunion. He has come in as a deep-line playmaker on defence. He's got some very, very good attributes uh, to play that position. We brought him in for £175,000 from Le Mans FC. Uh, he's had, he started his career at Metz. You know, he's, has he actually played in the league? Earn? No, he hasn't. Uh, so he's been at Mets, but he's he's quite good um, at 24 years old as well. Next in was Marjan Michevsky, uh, came in from ASV Giel. He is a central defender. He's, he's a no-nonsense central defender, but he can actually pay, play the ball as well. His vision isn't great. His first touch is not great. So no, he can't really play the ball. <laughs> Don't know what I'm talking about. Um, 
But he was a free transfer. He's played in Belgium his entire career. He's got some pretty decent match ratings across his career. Last season was his most productive season as well, breaking into the sevens with three player of the match awards. So quite excited to have him here. CD Sumare is another one who's come in as Senegalese defensive midfielder. Another one who can play on defend. He can also play as a Segundo Volante, although his finishing does let him down. Uh, but he's quite decent as well. He's come in uh, f- relatively cheap. £53,000 from Senegalese football. Where again, look at his, his career average over 344 appearances is in the sevens. So he's, he's pretty good. I'm quite excited to see him come in. Club at record transfer is Julius Okichukwu. Okichukwu. We'll, <laughs> we'll go with that. Okichukwu. At £500,000, he cost me quite a bit of money. Uh, but he is a left back. He's the new left wing back at the club. The only downside to his game is his crossing. But uh, we'll, we'll soon get him, hopefully, going in the right direction. He's only 21 years old. He's got massive potential as well. Uh, in fact, while I'm here, and I'll remember to do it, because if I click off this screen, I'll I'll forget. I'll completely forget. Uh, so he's come in as a record signing, and the most recently in is Alex Aroda, another central defender, South African this time. Uh, he, very, very good. Quite pleased to have him here. One thing that is really, really good about the Hungarian first division is there's no rules. There are no eligibility rules. You can have as many. You can, you can have an entire team full of Africans, Brazilians, stuff like that. You don't need to worry about homegrown players. Nothing. There's no squad registration. Uh, so, quite pleased about that. So that's how we're looking as a club. I have sold on a couple of um, transfer clauses as well. One point four millions worth to Liverpool. Believe it or not, Liverpool. I did notice this as well. I didn't show this. Uh, when we first looked at the club, but Liverpool are listed as one of our senior affiliates. Now, I have tried to get some players in from Liverpool, but they want us to pay all of their wages, and anybody who's played football manager or knows English football knows that everything in England, price-wise, is overinflated. So, for the likes of bringing in an under-21-year-old central defender in Max Murray, who is listed for loan, if we go to loan him, they want us to pay... 70% of his wages, which is, you know, £3,000. I can't offer that. But they also want stupid fees as well with optional future buyout fees and money for winning the cup and stuff like that. All the Liverpool players like that. Uh, So not very good there. We have got Mulder and uh, NACE as well as affiliates, but uh, their players aren't up to scratch. So in terms of what we've done in terms of season preview, we have halved our odds to 51s. So we're predicted to finish 6th. But uh, I've been having a look around some of the players in the league, and they're not—they're not anything special, you know. Fancy our chances. Fancy our chances. Fair and Varos are obviously going to be the difficult team to beat, but I do fancy us having a good season. In terms of pre-season, it's been excellent. We've conceded three goals across the the five games we've played, including beating some big French teams like Monaco. We beat four nil. Montpellier and Auxerre put six past Auxerre, so we've had a, a decent pre-season. But let's get into the opening day of the season against Uzpest. Hopefully, we can pick up the win against our local rival. The lineup that we're going to go for today, obviously, we'll learn the players throughout the season as we go. It's going to be Jago Dix in goal as the sweeper keeper. Uh, it's then going to be Toth as the right fullback. He he's okay. Uh, he's got some some good attributes. Twenty nine year old. Maybe he's, maybe he's one of the areas that we'll look to improve. Uh, but the rest of the back four. The remaining three are all new players. Now, Rhoda's only just come in. I haven't seen him play yet, uh, but he does enjoy big matches. He is consistent, and as we've already discussed, he's got some good attributes. Michevsky is another one, and Okachukwu uh, at the left back. Again, a new player. In midfield, two new players as well. Samari, now I haven't seen Samari play either. He's been on international duty with Senegal, uh, so quite excited to see him. Haral does play as one of the Segundo Volantes alongside Sipos. Uh, who was here originally. Again, he's he's pretty decent as that Segundo uh, Volante. He's got some good attributes for that, apart from the fact he can't shoot. Everything else is fine, though. Going forward, now Joseph Damasadi is not the starting uh, left winger. He's the one who we just had the testimonial for in the friendlies. 33-year-old, he's not starting, but the starter is currently injured. Uh, he's listed as the key player at the club, uh, Shazanski. So... Damasti comes in today. Kolber on the right-hand side. 
pretty decent. Quite pleased with him, 31-year-old Paul. And a daily uh, Hungarian, 29 years old. He's been banging them in for fun in pre-season. Eight goals in three games with a 9.23 average rating. So expecting a lot from him this season. Right, so here we go then, guys. First game in Hungary, first game of the season. Like I've already said, it is a local derby. Hopefully we can uh, hit the ground running. This time around we do slow start in nations and in particular seasons partly because of the, the the amount of players that we bring in. We have got five new players in the starting lineup today and here is one of them. It's Roda bringing the ball forward. Needs some support outside. He has got Toth. Looks to get the ball in. It's deflected high into the air. Afalabi comes out and claims that one. We're only three minutes into the game and we've already had our first attack which is encouraging. Afalobi goes wrong but that's easy for Roda who brings the ball out again. Good ball forward towards Kolba. Kolba's got a trailer, uh, sorry, a Drayli inside of him. I, I say this every time, guys, but apologies for the pronunciations of the names. It takes me a little while to get them sort of, get my teeth in the right place to, to learn how to pronounce them. Uh, here comes a Drayli. Switches the ball over to Sipos. Sipos carrying the ball forward. He's got a Drayli gone again, but it's, uh, unluckily it's cut out by Francis. And Zhao goes along with that, but Roda's underneath it. It's a good header into Sipos again. Toth, Kolba. Looking forward towards Shippos, who's in behind the defence here. He's inside the area. He's got Adreli inside. I can't pull it across for him, though. But Toth now brings the ball forward. He's tackled by Adrissi, though, who gets rid. But Roda with a good header again. And it's Toth, Sumare, Hurao into Adreli's got the ball at his feet. Adreli's put the ball in the back of the net. The Lino's flag was up in the bottom of the screen. We've got VAR in Hungary again, by the looks of it. Uh, so expect to see a lot of VAR checks going forward, guys. It has been disallowed. Adreli had strayed offside. Let's see how close it was. Yeah, it was miles off. Miles off. We didn't need VAR for that. We could have we could have trusted the linesman's decision. Uspest on the attack with the corner. The goalkeeper there, uh, Jagodix, comes out, claims that one comfortably, commanding of his penalty area there. And he looks to clear, clear the ball long, but he's, he's given it straight back to Uspest. That was totally wasteful. And Francis nonchalantly nods it back to Afalabi. Finds Francis again. Idrissi looking to switch the ball out to the right-hand side. And Kolev advancing down the touchline. Feeds the ball back into the middle. It's Idrissi. Ball forward. Toth reads it well. Cuts it out though. Now Kolber looking to get uh, uh, Damazdi away down the left-hand side. The old man of the squad. Damazdi comes back to Samari. But Samari's just stood still. And Nedev comes back and cuts it out. It's a good ball forward towards Zahoran. Who has put the ball in the back of the net. We're going to get the VAR check again though, are we? I think we are. It was questionable whether it was offside. It's been disallowed again. So we've had two goals disallowed now in this game by VAR. I thought he'd gone just a little bit too early. Indeed, he has. And thankfully thankfully for us, it has been ruled out. We've been the better team here. But here come Uspest again with Nadev. Decent free kick. Jagger Dixon has made a, a meal of that. To be honest, uh, goal line technology, which we can't see. Football manager, SI, get yourselves the proper football manager. They're the goal line technology cameras in there. You know, swivel around, zoom in on the goal line. Let's have some proper technology going on. Okachukwu with the throw in. Finds Machevsky to Damazdi. Okachukwu again. He's forced back. He's forced all the way back towards Jagodix. Finds Machevsky. Brings the ball over halfway. Samari, now Sipos to Kolba. Kolba with the ball forward into Hurao on his debut, looking for his debut goal. Afalabi makes a great save there though to deny the renew the, the man from Reunion his debut goal as a Kolba looks to take this corner towards that near post. Headed clear by Francis though and Kabol will complete the clearance but it's going to come back again with Shipos to Toth. Ah, I thought Toth might have been able to take that past his man there and uh, Whip a ball into the box. We've been on top in this half, though. It's been a, a really, really good, encouraging start to the season. Let's not go behind now. Just before half time, as Francis feeds that forward, but Jagadix does come out and claim that one quite comfortably. And he throws it out to Machevsky. Brings the ball forward. He's got Samari inside him. Samari finds Sipos forward towards Adreli. What can Adreli do? Finds Damazdi instead. It's back to Adreli. Adreli's in this time. He's hit the post. He's hit the post. He's done really, really... We worked that really, really well, bringing out a defence. Unfortunately, we have hit the post. But like I say, we are on top in this game. 
all the possession. We've had most of the shots as well. Massive XG over Ujpest. We just need to find the back of the net now, which, you know, we've done a lot in pre-season, including 11 in one game. Let's see if we can actually step up now and do it where it counts. Hopefully this is the, the moment. It's Toth. Tries to get the ball into the box. Tries again. Machevsky's underneath it. Francis does get his head to the ball. And now Stoyanov clears the ball, but uh, Chuk Okuchukwu does bring it forward again. Finds Harao into Adreli. Forward toward Tomazdi. We're in, and Tomazdi's put the ball in the back of the net. I do think it's going to be ruled out for offside again, though. Tomazdi did look like he was offside to me when the ball was played forward by Adreli. And it has been the third goal in this game that's been disallowed by VAR for offside. We worked it really well again. He, you know what, he's five yards offside. It's not even... Why did we need VAR for that football manager? You know, the, the linesmen aren't blind. They're not totally blind. Afalabi. Oh, that's a shocking pass. Adreli, can he capitalise? He can. Andor Adreli does get his first goal of the season. A shocking pass by Afalabi in goal there for his pest. He's absolutely gifted us. Gifted us the goal. I don't know what he's thinking. That's that's awful. That is absolutely awful. Uh, and Adreli calmly rolls the ball into the net. Uh, Adreli's not had the best of games either, so that's um, he's rather fortunate to be on a seven point three because he's had not like I say not a great game. Can we double our lead though? Toth feeding the ball into the box. Xiao cuts it out. Stoyanov goes long. It's well won, but in the air by Roda. Haral feeds the ball towards. Col We're going to get the fourth goal in this game. Disallowed for. For offside by VAR. Adreli's had the ball in the back of the net three times now. Uh, this one's also going to be ruled out for, for offside. It, it looked a mile offside. Indeed it is. That's four in one game. Did we need VAR again? Let's have a look. I don't think so. No. No. It is overused in Football Manager. And it's... it's do you know what? It's, it's boring to watch. You know, just give it offside, you know. Uh, Okachukwu with a good ball down the line towards Damazdi. Can he get the ball into the box? Adreli gets on the end of it. Can't find the back of the net, though. It's deflected behind for a corner. Good defending by the central defender there, I believe. It was Francis. Now, Colbert to take the resulting corner, though. Looking for his man at that near post. That's in towards Machevsky, but it's headed clear by Francis again. The ball comes back with Damazdi, though. Finds Shipos. Okachukwu went for the... Uh, went for glory there. Right, we're into the final 10 minutes. I have made a triple change. I've swapped the front three out. So we've brought Deke, Dobar and Peter on. Just looking to see out the game here. We have been absolutely dominant in this game. Uh, and we are into stoppage time at the end of that game. And that's the end. That's the end, guys. A fantastic opening day win. Alex Roder picking up the man of the match performance on his debut. And or Adreli with the only goal of the game. Their forward had a 5.7, which shows you just how good defensively we were we've had four disallowed goals for offside all by VAR but a fantastic start to life here in Hungary picking up a win on the first day of the season that's a rarity for us we always struggle at the start of the season with all the new signings getting the tactic across and as the only two teams who have played in the league we do find ourselves now top and bottom of the league so uh, there's the uh, the confirmation of the, the two buyouts that I've just done with Liverpool. How good were these players, by the way? I I can't see why Liverpool would be interested in him. He's he's not great. Yeah, he's not great. What about the other one, Torma? Again, not. Why would Liverpool? Uh, I don't understand that. Unless he was a youth academy player that Liverpool poached. But it says there, last club MTK, which is us, contracted Liverpool. Only ever shows him being at Liverpool. Okay. Right, guys, we're top of the league after one game. Uh, it is a 33-game season, I believe, here in the top flight in Hungary. It is 33, so every 11 games we're going to be back. Hopefully, we're in and about it. European football would be fantastic this season. Get some finances through the door. Uh, but, guys, thank you for watching again, and uh, welcome to Hungary. Hopefully, you enjoy the ride that we have here in Hungary with MTK Budapest. Looking to topple Ferenc Varos. Hopefully at the first attempt like we did in Poland. That would be great, wouldn't it? Uh, but guys, thanks for being here. Please remember to hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button. Uh, as I always say, it does help me out massively. Uh, and I appreciate every single one of you who does it. Um, I'll see you all in the next episode. So cheers, guys. Catch you later.